Ahoy there, watchers and listeners. This episode is brought to you by Viva Life. Follow the link in the bio, follow our affiliate link, and use the code HHT10 at checkout for 10% off. It really is such high quality stuff. I can't stress that enough. It's life changing bits and bobs. If you want to treat yourself, treat yourself to the best possible nutrition and supplementation, go there. Also, all the Just Giving pages for our upcoming charity hike are in the bio also. So please, if you can donate anything at all, please donate to us. This episode, we're joined by Julian Kirk again. We talk about, well, we generally give some housekeeping and some life updates, updates on our walk, on our training. And then we go into the power of reframe and we talk a lot about imposter syndrome. It's a cracking conversation, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, that's enough from me. Stop it now. And welcome back to Health and Juice. Cheers, Dylan. Oh, Piven hated that. <laughs> and the mic's probably not oh, good for it. Yeah, no. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. He never says much. I wonder if a Mike's listener. Right. <laughs> he is a listener. He's the true first listener. Yeah, uh, he is. Yeah. Meg, welcome. Welcome. Welcome, Meg. Welcome onto the two of you. Welcome and thanks. Oh. And also. And to me. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. I've got Mary on my lap. No one can see this. No. Mary was horrible. on my lap. And all settled too. down and letting as soon as Meg's lap became available. Double crossed me. That. Stabbed me in the back. Straight yeah. over to Meg. Oh, it's brutal. Mary is a dirty user. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a better option, she'll take it. I gotta respect it. She's a hustler. She takes the opportunity. It's like when you've got a friend who it's like, yeah, I might be free. <laughs> as soon as something else comes up. I might be free. You're not my first choice. <laughs> right now, you're my only choice. Might be and I'm making sure you. that you know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's likely there's something better than you coming up. <laughs> they may as well not reply. Uh. I might be free. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> That's usually me, though, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I'll just duck out of anything. Like, Bye, not coming. <laughs> you just be like, oh, maybe. Oh, sounds fun. And, I, and I'll end up just doing nothing at home. Sounds good for you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'd rather stay at home. I've got little things to do. Trinkets. I'd realign my trinkets. <laughs> <laughs> Which you this have done. trinket here. With your rocks. I've got so many rocks in my, my room My crystals now. need reordering. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I, I keep collecting little stones and rocks. Found one on our second training walk. Second, oh, it's segway more in. A segway. A fossil. It's a fossil. I walked past it. I saw it. And I was you like, did. I had to take a couple steps back and really... Work for it. Yeah. It's nice. Mm-hmm. Rory always finds a fossil. About this big, if you're watching, inch and a half. Oh. By two inches. Been there. Fossil sort of lines on it. It's wow. lovely. The funny story behind that is we weren't talking at that point no. in the walk. It was so pretty... I had to find other friends. I was on my own. <laughs> it was pretty early in. I was in. also with you in isolation. <laughs> we were all separate. We were all together but separate. Yeah, oh, we wow. had our first uh, argument well, <laughs> on the f- our walk. The first hurdle was a bridge. Yeah, Actually, quite literally a bridge quite okay and this bridge. bridge from where I was looking and where Jules was looking was fine to you're not over. bridge experts uh, we're not but it looked fine it wasn't my fine my certificate's still coming through look okay I will describe this bridge uh-huh. it had a sign saying yeah. do not go on the bridge um, it was in a very hard to get area and it looked like one foot on it and it would fall apart <laughs> okay let me let me describe it from my perspective. <laughs> it said, this bridge is risky, but you can if you want. Try it. Didn't say, it didn't try say, it. It said, these railings are not ideal for toddlers or for elderly people. And then we, me and Jules looked. I was like, I don't see not, any toddlers. We're not toddlers or elderly I haven't been a toddler people. for ages. <laughs> 
God, I can't remember the last time I was tunnelling. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm between those. <laughs> yeah, you're not quite. Old. I'm not. I'm not quite old yet, am I? Or elderly? No. To be fair, it's it a was. Mindset. It was blockaded. The bridge. Do you know but what? Though? It was just uh, a little hop, and we're away. I tell you what, oh. we did deal with it like toddlers. So maybe yeah. that was it. Oh my Wait. god, the way we were berating Meg, Meg started just walking off. <laughs> Meg, 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 Meg. Why? 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 <laughs> can we? Can we? So I was caffeinated and I was full of oats. It, the thing we'd also we'd so we'd, we'd found the other path. Then we'd come back to the bridge, and there was the fact that we had to go right, right back to back. the other path. We were we'd like, no, but walked. it's just there. Before we actually started, we'd done a K and a half of faffing back <laughs> oh, and forth. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> but, That's okay, how you get your 27 just miles to, in. Just to enhance why I, like, just to reinforce my point. Yes. I have a fear of bridges mm. and that the two of you know about. Yeah, and we're I've aware of it. I've always had a fear of bridges. Yeah. And had there been no sign, it would have been tricky for me. Yeah. But the fact that there was a sign saying "Do not go on," even if it's for elderly and toddlers, that is too much for me. I won't do it. This is where, you know, we have somewhat, somewhat of a toxic uh, growth mindset. I'm like, <laughs> Meg, it could be good for you. Yeah, that was what it was. It'd be so good for you. It's a good challenge for you to overcome. <laughs> I'm gonna make it so good. Because for I you. wanted to do it so badly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it. I'll make it good for you. And then afterwards, I, I it got to the point where I was like. Oh shit! We made a mistake. Sorry, Meg. It was <laughs> sorry, just, sorry, sorry. Yeah, is what we were. It was again. Again. It was like sorry, 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 sorry. sorry, sorry. We're really sorry. Oh. it's okay. I forgive you both. Yeah. Yeah, I was, it like, was that I know it's the trigger of Meg. She doesn't like. She. I mean, she has a fear of bridges, but today it could, it could be, be so be good. <laughs> I heard the last phrase come out of my mouth. I was like, it could be an adventure. And then I saw her turn. I was like. Didn't need to say that. Yeah. That's gone. <laughs> I yeah. shouldn't have said that. Should have said that. I, did, said I, that. I basically ignored you two for half an hour. Oh, uh, it wasn't that long, I think. It felt like half an hour because we were walking it uphill. It felt like half yeah, an we, hour. Yeah, we went down to the point and I saw you go into fifth gear and like <laughs> go and I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> they hit a point because it was like everything built up and then mm, you went to fifth gear and went yeah, power and down. I got triggered. At one point I was like, we're waiting for it to slow and then we'll catch it. <laughs> <laughs> like a gazelle, <laughs> an injured gazelle. Oh my god! You're, yeah, you're you're going, and we just keep plodding, trying to catch you. But we made amends. But that wasn't the first hurdle. No, I mean, no. it was a turbulent walk. It was a turbulent it? walk. There mm-hmm. were problems. The first thing. First of all, our footwear wasn't good. Yep, you we wore were wearing terrible shoes. Steel tap. Oh, steel, steel toe, toe boots. cap boots. Oh yeah. That can't have been good. All that weight on your legs. It's probably why you pulled something, Jules. Yeah, we'll yeah, it definitely wasn't my fault. But basically, I never made mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear you trip at one point when you were behind me, and I just didn't look back. Oh, like quite late into the because you were really suffering. Oh yes, and every you time I was like, back. and every time I was like, Jules, I'm oh, like crawling. <laughs> I can't waste the energy to look back. <laughs> and then <laughs> that back is on. not there. No, it was because every time I was like, I'll pick you up. You're like, no. So, yes. and when I heard it trip, I was like, I'm not going to look, so I'll just embarrass him further. So I didn't. I didn't, like, fall over. I don't remember. I mean, I was walking like I'd been shot with an arrow. A hundred percent. I was, like, dragging. I was, like, dragging the, oh, you know yeah. when... Um, the old a, heel drag. A puppet with really big shoes was like that, yeah. just sort of sliding along, oh my shuffling. God. Yeah, everything, my hips, my legs, my feet and my toes. Feet just, and toes. And your back. Adversity. My back. You recovered. I was setting the pace, so I just stayed ahead. Oh, yeah, you had to, you just had to go. I had to keep going. Yeah. yeah. It was basically like a time trial. It was when you, was, you turn want... around and be like, come on, and be like, fuck it. I was like, come oh. on, hobbits. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd do the car. Car. Oh. Yeah, I look I back, I'm like, wait for you to do it. I'd always And at one back. point I did it, I don't think I heard it back. I was like, you were very far ahead. Okay, I was far yeah. ahead. <laughs> at one point, we had to guess where to go. We're we like, did. we, we did. don't know where he is. Yeah. I guess we'll go this at way. At one point, I stood up on a railing to wait, I could feel I could see you, and you came a different way around. I was like, oh. Oh, nice. Well, um, and when you were voice noting Charlie, and we went the wrong way. <laughs> oh. I was listening to a voice note for two minutes and then replying for like three or four. Yeah. And we'd gone for like seven minutes in the wrong direction. <laughs> And Roy was like, don't worry, not far. We haven't no. gone far because Julian's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, it's all right. And it was it's raining. Right. It was a minor detail. Yeah. But um, um, we walked 13 miles, 13 miles. Mm. It was meant to be only 17 and a half K. We, but we did like, one. yeah, 21. Because yeah. <laughs> we were faffing. Yeah. But it was a good walk. It I was felt good. right with it. It was yeah. just my feet that hurt a bit at the end. Yeah. I got really funny blister on the top of my big toe. I'll tell you what, I'm ready for the next one with the Vivo Barefoot Shoes. 
Yeah, Jules purchased some Vivo Beth shoes. See, he yeah, had money. I went for the trail ones, uh, which are vegan. Nice. Come on. Nice. I will be getting some myself also. Yeah. Shout Great out to Vivo Beffert. Shout out. Pippin looks angelic right now. Yeah. And Mary, we'll, we will say Mary is over there looking yeah. real cute. Uh, Maybe we'll take a picture so for the... Yeah, she looks so... I'm going to take a picture. Yeah. And I'll timestamp it in. Yeah. <gasps> Love this. Oh. Hide my face behind the no, pop shield. No, the smile. It's exposed. Oh, because of, of, of the lights. Um, so let's talk while Rory's doing that because that's distracting. Oh, we talk. Um, what should we talk about? Uh, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? Oh, I'm still good. What were other talking points? We, um, did the, we did the walk, and that was a whole thing. <laughs> it was a whole thing. What else has happened to us? What oh. else has happened? We did 13 miles. We almost recorded this yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Almost. Then we had a bit of a, bit of a meltdown. Yeah, the studio yeah. was not. Was the not, studio wasn't tidy. Was not I got upset. Shit. What's Julian the opposite upset. of feng shui? Sheng fui. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was sheng, it was fui, it was <laughs> there was fui here, sheng there. There was bits and bobs. It was not one of the finer things in life. No, no it wasn't great. I was ready to record in squalor though. I was like, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. No, my brain was too messy. It was like, no, Bored messy. and messy. Yeah. We basically were just firing bees into Meg's head. <laughs> Take the bees. <laughs> <laughs> That, it could that, be really good for you. That's something I do experience often where I'm like, there's so many things. There's bees in my head. <laughs> you said there's, that to me yesterday. There's bees. Yeah. So I'm, sometimes I'll say to me, I'm just getting the bees out. All right, Leave me alone for a bit. Mm. And I respect that. Yeah, I did do a lot of journaling, caught up in journaling yesterday. I did some journaling yesterday. It's did very you? angsty though. Really? I'm not going to read it. I was just reading Jules some of mine. <laughs> Oh, so it done. was a beautiful morn, and I saw the birds. Sometimes it's very intense, sometimes it's very loving. I am an intense lover. Yeah, I was just reading Jules, some of my old entries. This diary, thanks to Charlie for buying me this. It's like this recycled is, paper. This is an excellent um, portion. What was that noise? What was that noise? Excellent portion. Excellent the portion. podcast? Are you reading your diary? Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, what the heck are you talking no, about? No, I was halfway through saying what I was saying. Wait, wait, I don't understand the noise. What? Did you hear the noise over there? I thought it was over there. <laughs> I think it was over there. I think it was over there. <laughs> noise, Arrow. Noise <laughs> over there. Um, my first entry my was the 2nd of February of 2021. Dumbledore's I'm not going to gonna read that one, but some of it is like quite intense. Some of it, I'm just like, I love myself and I love my body. Good. Just reminders. Affirmations. Good. I love you and your I've body. released myself from expectation <laughs> and worry. Instead, I allow events to occur as they may. I'll try and find a funny one. <laughs> Fourth of the third, 21. Date was unsuccessful. <laughs> I oh. need a break away from the dating apps. Uh, yeah. Oh, that, one. that was that was sad. Cause we were it so wasn't excited, sad. Yeah. It was just one of them things, isn't one it? One of them things. Outcomes, outcomes. Podcast recording three. My daily diet. That was a good one. That was fun. <laughs> There's some funny stuff in here. Sometimes I'm just like, I arose at 6.25. I don't, <laughs> I don't sit around wasting time that can be usefully spent. <laughs> that was the day you were feeling intense, obviously. Oh, there's a lot then. I just forced myself into intensity. It keeps me going. I yes. feel like when I don't journal... Or like use some sort of affirmation. I feel it, it just makes me better. It's nice to have that focus. Yeah. It I makes me better. I think writing, like I basically purge my thoughts into a diary. So if I've got thoughts that keep going round and they come round a few times, I'll be like, right. Getting the bees I down. I will write them down and hopefully they'll be gone. Because I tend to hold on to thought. I'm like, i got to remember that. got to remember that. got to, rem-. And it's all inane bullshit. I'm like, oh, that's a cool phrase. No, it's not. I'm just being dramatic. Um, no, but I think it's good to write down anything, any inspiration that comes to you. Just a cool. Sp- you never know when you might need that. And yeah. they're like, oh, that's when I'll use it. <laughs> you throw it out in yeah. conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good to wipe the mind clean when you can. Yeah. Everyone has their own different methods. Mm. But I think environment is big as well. Mm-hmm. We experienced that with how messy and how uh, chaotic. It was Sheng Fuade all over the shop in our um, yes. 
It was. It's been a in the house. It's been a turbulent time, but carpet tomorrow. New carpets, and yeah. we're getting our jab. <gasps> we're getting jabs. Oh, that's another big update you've remembered. HHT COVID vaccinations. Jab Uno. We are a COVID vaccination positive podcast. If it helps with herd immunity, I'm all for it. We're exactly. The Get those jabs, go, then we can go on holiday. <laughs> Nicely done. Probably won't Sweet. go on holiday until next year. But that's be, what I mean. It will be a staycation. We yeah. won't be going on holiday anytime soon. We should do our own health retreat here. Yeah. Do We're going to swap bedrooms so it feels really... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I haven't been here before. No, I'm not taking his But then me and Jules will stay in the same room. Sorry, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm all right with it. It's fine. Oh. It says on the retreat. Sorry, it says we're in the same room. Sorry, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we, we printed it. We, we write it. In your handwriting. <laughs> we tip X it out and then put, sorry, the, the people, the retreat. And you're like, I thought, Meg's like, I thought we did this. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, actually, you gaslight you into believing it. No, we are anti gaslighting. Anti gaslighting. Provax, anti gas. Yes. Oh, sh- there you go. Slogan, slogan, slogan. Liquids only. Shui thing. Yeah, it is a liquid though, the vaccine, so. Yeah, it was frozen. It was a solid and then goes to liquid. Oh, That's they have why. to be used they after have to be defrosting. Used. Yeah, yeah, if it was gas, it'd them. kill you. <laughs> Here's some bubbles straight into your blood. <laughs> I, don't think, it wouldn't, I don't think that much would kill you immediately. No, you only need a few bubbles only to kill you. Only the week. You. Right, okay. I think I could take many bubbles, right? <laughs> All right, you get. You get like, I've necked up. two beers and been fine. I could. Uh, I'll wear around a t-shirt, toxic masculinity t-shirt. That's why I they had that I could take joke. the bubbles. Do you remember that joke in It's Always Sunny when they were talking about the IV drip? Yeah. Um, and they had used. They said they tried to use beer and it was unsuccessful. That's, that's the joke. That like, it could kill you. Uh, there you go. Little. It's quite funny though because we have. Meg has her vax. And then shortly after, like half an hour later, Jules was his, and then 10 minutes after, I have mine. And it was all unplanned. We all booked it at the same time. Oh, no, but you get a text in the... Got time text. Slot, the time, the time <laughs> slot you get The time slot you get given is just that, isn't it? There's not really any option. Yeah. Not like, it's not like, choose whenever you like. It's but we, well, all, we all went immediately for the first, first, the first one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Like we could have gone for later. I mean, none of us kind of. It, kinda it spoke could have been other. different. Yeah, it could have, but it wasn't. It wasn't. But I mean, it could have been. We're gonna play a prank on them. All we'll wear the same hat. <laughs> you keep saying that, but what? Hat? There, it's a huge operation. We won't have the same person, so I don't know. <laughs> and we're like, did you like a hat? No, I don't know if we can all wear the same hat because we haven't all got the same hat. So. Oh heads, no! I was assuming that we'd share size. one hat. We wouldn't we have, have to pass it back. Hat. Like <laughs> when you're using someone else's oyster card. The Pikachu hat that'll stick out. Relay it. When you when you don't have an Oyster card for the bus, someone yeah. passes Oyster that. card, that's a throwback. Mine got stolen that, that time we were in Bristol. Jules. I think I ever managed to have one. I think I had one and it was too late already then. <laughs> like, you don't need this. Yeah, you don't Mine need this anymore. Mine was a London Oyster card that got stolen in Bristol. I think London, I think Oyster card is only London, isn't it? It's yeah. not like universal. I don't, well, yeah. But what my point being, it's mm. funny. That person who stole it oh, can't I see. use it. Universal I see. bus. Universal bus. Spaceship. <laughs> As you were one day operating comes, a universal bus. One day it comes. Oh, I want to get on this bus. It looks new. It looks cool. They say we take Oyster card. And <laughs> 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 you get seeing the other realms. But I wouldn't be able to get on it because I don't have an Oyster card. Oh, you wouldn't. Jules would though. You've oh, still got yours. You? I'm sure I've got mine somewhere. <laughs> I never <laughs> they're, throw they're it. Like, it's out. old. Does that matter? And you're like, and they say oh, no. Oh, expired oyster. That's just as good as if it <laughs> was. It's expired. actually better. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're we going, we don't follow time. Our name is actually expired oysters. <laughs> oh. oh dear. <laughs> we're stinky, but we're a lot of fun. And our texture's like funny because our sister works at an oyster restaurant. She does. She does. There you go. It all comes back around. Oh, do you end. have an oyster card? Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> like. She's shaking in the corner. Like, Don't talk to me about oysters. <laughs> I've had enough of oysters for one lifetime. Yeah. I've never had oyster. Never will. I had it once. Did actually, you? at um, yeah. Florence's first place of... Not the one. Business. Occupation. Occupation? Place yeah. of work. There you go. Whatever. You I'm, also worked there. Under the Florence occupation. I worked there, and I remember one story where I was 17. I'd been to Reading. I had my Reading band on. <laughs> It lit on fire in one of the candles. Oh. It was like quite long. Oh my god! <laughs> like, You're on fire. I was like, <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. 
That's really funny. No one needs to tell you when you're... Fu- I guess they do, actually. No, sometimes you. you need to be told. Yeah, all right. If I don't want to be told. I'd rather work it out for myself. <laughs> Imagine being like, shh, let me find out for myself. <laughs> you're on fire, you're on fire. Shh, 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 shh. I, 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 I'm fully aware. Oh, I am on fire. <laughs> <laughs> pat, 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 pat. Me, I saw it. Me, not you. Me, me, me. <laughs> I don't need your help. I already knew it. I can feel the warmth. <laughs> That's toddler energy as well. It is. That's it nice. really is. Yeah. But I had an oyster at that restaurant. Do you like it? The texture is like snot, isn't it? And it's not for me, no. No. Not for me. I had foie gras there. Really? Yeah, and I feel bad about it still. Didn't even like it. I ate it mm. because. I really wasn't privy to what it was until recent times. I've never. I don't. I think I've had it once within a dish, but I also had steak tartare. Wasn't a fan. I feel like uh, it was, wasn't seasoned enough or salty enough. It needs, but, it needs to have a lot of junk in it to make it edible, junk. doesn't it? <laughs> junk. Not junk like processed food, no. processed meat. Like a known, known, like a known, oyster cards. A known carcinogen. I think I should outline that there is healthy ways, healthier ways to eat meat. That's what Dr. Gregor always says. You, you ask him, is this healthy? He says, compared to what? Mm. Is like a organic locally farmed meat healthier than McDonald's burger. Of course it is. Yeah. So go for that if you can. Well, yeah, just go to a butcher's. If I'm, you, if I'm you, always if just you ex- hard, inspiring. Yeah, go to local you know, a local one. But it's not that I'm saying eat meat, I'm saying that if you, make if healthier you choices to. in your life. Include more whole foods and be mindful where you get your meats yeah. from. Or just close the radius on where you're sourcing your food from, yeah. even if it's 10 miles. Yeah, because mass production miles. is one of the worst elements uh, of the meat industry. Elephants? I said element. Oh. <laughs> I, didn't... I was so forced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, supporting mass... Uh, factory farming is the worst Mm -hmm. so if you're looking at it from an environmental standpoint Mm. but also from your health make make healthier choices for both yeah so don't don't place your vote on cheap cheap and nasty processed meats and respect the animals like if you're going to eat meat be respectful about it and don't eat junk from a supermarket because then you're just asking for more animals to go through torture. Maybe go to a butcher's, talk to the butcher man, have a nice little chat, get get some sausages from a local farm. Yeah. You're supporting that farm and you're not supporting evil, evil corporations. Mm. Think, but here's a good thing. Yeah. I cut you off. What are you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say the reason we're probably more intense about it than usual is on the walk we came across. Oh. Like, I don't captivity cows and it was they were beautiful with their we got a little lick from them yeah all them as well yeah, 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 yeah. more cows about... there were lots of cows I, I wouldn't say we're intense I just you've got to see the balance in the uh, argument mm. but I think it's good to outline that it's not all like you know we're giving the health home truths in previous episodes but there is other ways to sometimes we can be it. soft <laughs> I'm kind. a soft I beat that I'm soft so mm. but Big huge news. Co op up the coop actually <laughs> have slashed all their vegan products in half. All the You get half portions. <laughs> you know their brand grow. Yeah. All oh, the plant based food. Their stuff. They've slashed it all in half to make it more accessible. Come on. For the population. Okay. I can't emphasize enough how much I love the grow products. Those burgers are just oh, so ultimate. isn't that great news? Yeah. What? What? Uh, I hope everyone follows suit. I think they will. Because you want to make money it, in it. It's about making it accessible for everyone, so they don't just go for the cheap and meat. I think it's brilliant. I think it's cheap, a huge cheap. move. Out the coop. Have a good car. <laughs> <laughs> Other great news. Yeah. Do we have any more news? <laughs> I know, oh, I was staying about staying at the side of your uh, head. So I don't I, think there's any other news. We can segue into the main topic. Segue into the main topic. Segway alert. It's so smooth. Well, it comes from conversations we've been having mm. all the time. F- for a long time. Um, talking about reframing and trying to be Reframe. positive. But 
um, we've all discovered we have different versions of imposter syndrome, which I find fascinating, mm. um, purely because it's, everyone's insecurities are different. And so obviously their imposter syndrome, if they have it, would be different. So we could go around the room and talk about it. <laughs> we have a thing to have. We need a we need a ball to throw. Yeah, I think. Just pass Pippin it's, over. No, it's just sometimes we experience these feelings. It's not it's always. always. No, yeah. no, no. You just go through bouts and you're like, oh. Feeling sensitive. Usually coming from doubt. Yeah, it's sensitivity coming from doubt or um, um, lower self esteem or self confidence. It all ties together, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um. I've just started listening to a book on self-confidence and self-esteem. It's a little one. It's a shorty, but a goodie. Mm. Mine. Is she good? No, I keep, don't know. keep it if you can. And she's gone. She's gone. The way I'd She's see loose. Mary, Mary, Mary's on the ground now. Anything could happen. <laughs> Anything could happen. <laughs> it's the final play. The eagle is in flight. Pippin's not going to like it. <laughs> oh, he's not, actually. We might have to cut real quick. Oh. Cut. What is she doing? Cut. Yeah, okay. cut. 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 I can't do this. Cut. The main topic of this podcast <laughs> we wanted to tackle is imposter syndrome. We're going to leave that bit in you said. It's yeah. pretty good, yeah. So you've already heard that. <laughs> you already know <laughs> that. Sake. Oh. We can cut into here. We can cut it. So. No, we swear now. It's okay. Oh, yeah, I think we've all sworn. I, I, I don't cut sworn it out. Sworn to secrecy and to mischief. I'll beep the terrible words, but we know not to say them anymore, don't we? Rory. <laughs> so we go around the room. I think it comes from periods of um, lower self-esteem mm-hmm. for me. And yeah. I guess self-confidence because when you're like, oh, am I, am I good at this? Am I good enough? Yeah. Am I good enough for you? Am I good enough for this? Good enough for you is all I want to be. That song. I remind myself of that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's what that's what does it for me, really. Mm-hmm. And it's like a little bit of doubt creeping in. You've got to just sort of bash it away. It's, it's a really, it's a tricky one. I think I found that maybe my definition of it was different or when you would, guys would kind of first talk about imposter syndrome. I was like, oh, yeah, I feel that. I feel like this, and you're like, no, I don't think that's what that is. What was your definition? I just thought it was feeling like an imposter, so feeling like you don't belong. Oh, or yeah, that you're but not. that is your, that is that's your thing. go-to feeling when you're feeling any kind of strife, is to <laughs> yeah. be like, I'm an alien. When this you say all... go-to feeling, I can help a giggle, like, June's looking through his files. Oh, where's my go-to? Where's my imposter where's the ha- What's the house feeling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have the house feeling. Oh, no. I'll have the glove. usual. <laughs> <laughs> like, is it your favourite again? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Um, stop saying um. So you would define it as just not feeling like you belong. Yeah. So I, I thought, yeah, I thought it was um, feeling like you're the outsider, like everyone else has like the secret code, and you're you're on the outside mm-hmm. looking in. I understand that. Though. I think you can describe it any way you like. So, yeah. <clears throat> and it's not always about defining a feeling. I think that can kind of get a bit tricky sometimes, where you're so like obsessed with, with labeling, defining it. something, and then you become it becomes when you start. It starts to define you, or you start to define yourself with it. Yeah. yeah. By describing a whole period of time where you're all the time describing, I am this, I am that. Yeah. But you need to be able to differentiate between the skill of identifying and labeling your feelings and then actually not doing that all of the time. You have the skill to be able to, like, I know what this feeling is, I can label it. But if, you, if you're obsessed with labeling it, naming your feelings, then A, yeah, you're more likely to become identified with it. And B, it's more mind matter. It's more you not there, you know, letting that energy dissipate or channeling it into something. You're just sitting there like, oh, you know, trying to dissect it. And, mm, what's this one? This I've got some flavours of imposter in there. <laughs> I think that's what you get bogged down with. And then you're absolutely not present. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. basically like asleep and that's you're what in it your wants. own head. Yeah, 100% wants that. Stay with me. Yeah. Stay up here. It's the, the ego being like, I've been wrong. <laughs> you know, it is the ego. Yeah. Feeling like you've been damaged or you've been hurt or you're you're feeling really sorry for yourself. Yeah. Trying to reinforce your narrative of yeah. being hard done by. Yeah. Yeah. What, what would I'd you describe it as, Nick? Well, for me, um, it goes back. So mine's different <laughs> to yours. But so when I was younger, like four, I was quite a strange child and I didn't ah. really have any friends. So 
poor little sad Meg at, you know, year one, I would just, at lunch times and breaks, just walk around, walk around the playground by myself and just hope for the it to be over. So, and then um, Amy Watts, you know Amy Watts? She actually befriended me and took me under her wing and I was so grateful for that. But I think having no friends for such a long time has caused me to not believe any of my friends are my friends. So yeah. I'll just immediately have such low self-esteem with it. I'll be like, no, they're too cool. They don't They don't like me. Mm. And then that, that'll be the narrative I've spun. Yeah. And then when they eventually reach out to me, I'm like, mm. I don't trust them. What, what do is? you want? <laughs> yeah. What do you want from and me? And it tends to make me quite standoffish, I think sometimes yeah um mm. and i'm trying to deal with it the best i can but I it see you standoffish up. very often it's oh, not no. it's not from your perception yeah. i think it's from meg's own like pov and mm -hmm. i get that as well where you're you think you're not good enough for someone yeah like, what am i do i truly deserve to be here yeah when you said your story about walking around on your own in the playground i did the same thing did you? and i have a story when an older kid he must have been like I was I was one of the youngest years, and he was one of the oldest. I was walking around just on my own, just pottering around. <laughs> and he just, he was like this, and he punched me in the arm. No. And then I cried. <laughs> and he was like, sorry, sorry. What? Oh. I don't know if it hurt that much, but he punched me right in the arm. No, that's 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 a horrible place well, to cry. And I immediately cried. Yeah. I was so ready to cry all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I f Back maybe we just found it hard to make friends. It was really hard, age. but also because we were one of four, I think we... Never had to really, because we enough. just had friends. <laughs> so it was hard to actually introduce well, and also yourself. Well, so different personalities and different... Yeah. The, the different ways in which our brains work. Mm. Everyone's different. But perhaps yeah. it's just not correct for us to be in a certain environment. Like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't even label school it. School was hard. It's not, not, everything, not everything is easy all the time. And there's not no. always a reason for why you mm. find it difficult. And sometimes trying to find a reason isn't the most better. It's just yeah. random. Uh, that's why I try and just reinforce and try to f not believe it. Yeah. But I think with this pandemic, it's made it massively worse. Cause yeah. You don't get to see people. And that has been hard for me. Because usually I can reassure and be like, no, no, it's all my friends. They yeah. still like me. Yeah. They were smiling at me. That means they like me. Yeah. But because when you can't see them all the when time. When you can't see yeah. them, you can't you, I can't shut that voice up a lot mm. and that's the thing with imposter it's almost like an oxymoron i mean and you guys can correct me if i'm wrong but it is like mental resistance to what already is isn't it so you you already are achieving mm. the thing yes. and it's your mind saying i shouldn't be and well, it's like this deserve. confliction of it's like mm -hmm. well it already is mm. don't suffer exactly. trying to change it because it already it's that it already is that yeah it's just and the that's a good voice. way of reframing it reframe mm. okay. <laughs> Segue into reframing. Love reframing. <laughs> um, what I would say to that as well is completely lost what I was going to say because I got distracted by something. What was I going to say? What did you just say? I say in the uh, imposter syndrome is an oxymoron. Yeah, I think because of s setting high expectations for ourselves and like the growth mindset we try and inhabit with the pod, especially sometimes we're like, oh. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> and then some days you're like so manic and like yeah. so excited for yeah. it. Yeah. But we're we're trying to balance out. I think but it's we getting do a lot better. Each other. But not most of the time, but... if one of us is down, the other one's up, and we try yeah. and lift each other we up. Balance each other. It's but I think really that's nice good, dynamic, especially with the three of us. Mm. Yeah. Because we tend to help each other out. The safe triangle. I'd say. Uh, um. With. I've completely forgotten as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I it's, that, it. it's that balance between like paying attention to everyone, eye contact, yeah. trying and, try and, try and actually to be present and listen to what they're no, saying. No, just wait to speak. And then <sighs> being like, I, I have something, and then figuring it around out as I go. go. Oh, that was it. Okay, so growth. <laughs> okay, I've, I've, I've remembered it now. So growth mindset. Uh, you have to be able to forgive yourself for being where you are. If it's if you're always just projecting yourself into the future, like oh, soon I'll be bigger or I'll be smarter or whatever, you know, if you're putting yourself into that place, A, the future doesn't exist, so you've just kind of portioned off a, a section of your happiness to something that isn't there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't forgive yourself for where you're at, then you're also not going to forgive other people for, for, for being on their own journey as well. That's an interesting point because at a certain point, you do need to have somewhat of a plan for your future that you live day to day and you mm -hmm. live in presence. But yeah. it is, it's kind of 
a tricky one as well. Like live yeah. live in the present, but also think about where you want to be. Well, sometimes yeah. the, about the where present thing to do is to plan. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. Right, that is true. If you're very present life. when you're planning, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Reframed, because I feel like that is important. Yeah. Going, that's something that would give me anxiety and worry. It's like, what am I gonna do? Because of being raised and growing growing up in a society where you need to decide what you're gonna do, you need to keep deciding what you're gonna mm-hmm. do, and this is what you're gonna do forever. You find your career, you find it, and then you do it, and then it's yeah. such an you keep doing it. Thought, oh, that yeah. would worry me. And I'm like, I need to plan what. I'm, what. But then, I, I've read something that really everyone. resonated with me, which is like, don't worry about how it's going to happen. Just do. Yeah. Obviously, have your plans and your aspirations and your ambitions, yeah. but don't worry about how it's going to happen because it's inevitably not going to happen that way. Yeah. Yes. And but as you're ready. It's so important that, I mean, this is the thing, is that it's all part of the educational systems that they want you to fulfil, that, you know, the unis want you to go there. Mm-hmm. And it's it's almost like, and I felt like that, I was like, oh, I can fit into that box so good. I can literally do exactly what they <laughs> want. You can fit into boxes good. So good. You get I, in I and... Hide. Yeah. You, you, did, you did a good job of hiding in that box that one time. And, and I, I knew you were there. I mean, <laughs> I was bursting It's so it. big. And like, the box <laughs> never you, gonna... you get in there, people just, just it's a like, box there. Just a box. I'm like, oh, Julian's in a box again. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't know unless you were like, yeah, I'm in here. Yeah. Um, or he bursts out, scares you. Oh, he loves to scree at people. I love to get a good scree in. <laughs> scree! Oh, my God. I got you so good. <laughs> you got me so good. <sighs> you love to scare people. I get a good scree in, yeah. I was and behind you, the you stairs. Go with Scream, scream. <laughs> it makes me laugh. One time you did anger me somewhat, and I was like, well, right now, <laughs> you, you'll get in my room, yeah. and sometimes you'll you'll not even complete the screw because you'll say, you just never came in your room. <laughs> and you're in there in the dark, lying on my bed. Yeah. You come out to me, you're like, I was just in your room for way too long <laughs> trying to scare you. And you get your head about it, like, I don't, I don't want to be here if he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> but you got me good in the kitchen, dark kitchen behind the island, you screamed yeah. me good. And now I was slightly angry for a little bit. I was like, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> there is something so funny about scaring people. It, it is good. We I used to, to do it to you it. all the That's time. Thing. I feel bad when it gets like late evening time. So I'm always on his wind down routine. And he's like halfway through it. He comes in to no, get some water. He he screams as much as he gets screwed at. Yeah. Do you remember I scream as much as the next man. When <laughs> Heroes first came out. Oh. And we watched it with the fan when we shouldn't have. We were too young. Mm. Um, I remember. And you would hide behind doors and yell Siler at me. Well, no, it would be more like a hiss. A hiss scream, I would call it. Yeah. Behind doorways, all the time. Because we were so scared of Siler. Um, do you remember? I think the best. I know exactly what you're going to yeah. say. The sock. The sock. Oh, my the God. The best um, spook we've ever done to anyone. So Florence would you always be our scene. target. So Florence was an easy one to get. And yeah. I do... F- I yeah, do I mean, feel some remorse. The stuff that you guys did to her. We, we were such horrible little creatures just playing but pranks. She, she got us back a lot of the time. She did, and she did. Punches so and, usually I, with I, punches I, in the back, we, which are yeah. warranted. And biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> no, that I got him with the biscuit. Oh. I think the same holiday. Anyway. Was it the same holiday? <laughs> this right, is the manic the energy that I'm used to right now. We were right. in Scotland. Scotland. Uh, I was sharing a room with Florence. Sharing. Two twin beds. <laughs> Two. Twin. Two of them. <laughs> Um, no one else finds this. Uh, <laughs> no one else knows. Uh, oh. Rory and I, we we were like a terrible duo. duo. Just a tricksy little tricksies. Uh, just we thinking just, of schemes we can pull. We would love to scheme. So uh, I don't know what caused us to think about this, but uh, we were Florence and I were sharing a cupboard, and on the top I would keep all of my underwear, socks, knickers, etc., and. Uh, I got Rory to hide in the cupboard behind all of the coats um, underneath where I kept and all I, my I fit socks. Back there, real good. How skinny long little, you in there for? skinny little Herbert. Dark Not long. Room. It turn was a tight turn. scheme. <laughs> we knew exactly what step one, like, step two, <laughs> step three, step four. I was like, Rory, go hide. But there was like, a okay. step. There's an extra step that we weren't really intending on. But so. Uh, <laughs> so I went to Florence. Florence, my feet are really cold. Could you please go get me some socks? And she was like, Of course I will. Unbelievable. Because she's lovely. Uh, so she goes in. And I, I scream. 
I don't think it was a scream. It was just like a, a loud hiss scream. Yeah, you, you <laughs> what is it? Was a hissing screaming? I don't know. I'm part snake. I am part reptile. It's always like have been. Leonardo DiCaprio in the beach, basically. Yeah, energy. yeah. Um, <laughs> but and, but it was yeah. too good, and she too... cried. That was step. That was the last step. She locked us out of my room. I did feel bad. Yeah, uh, that hindsight, feeling is not. A good when one. you take it too far. <laughs> You, you, uh, you, a, you feel bad. It was a proper scree scare. Um, and then later in that holiday, um, who started it? I think we were just generally angsty at each yeah, other. Yeah, we were angsty. So and you, you, was it a rich deal or was it a digest, it digestive. digestive biscuit? Because they digestive. crumble real well. Meg crumbled one into my bare back. I don't think <laughs> I, was, I wasn't wearing we a top. We were in the kitchen. Yeah. And you, do, you weren't wearing top, so I... Crumbled it right into your back. I not what the argument was. We were arguing. That, that, I... sort, of, that sort of thing really <laughs> pisses me off. And I if know you that... want to annoy me, crumble something, <laughs> put crumbs on me or crumbs on my back, and I'll, I'll be angry. <laughs> so I knew immediately I'd done something wrong. So you tried to run I away. I tried to run away. And I got a digestive just in my grip. Endo Ren, and I threw it as hard as I possibly <laughs> could at Meg. <laughs> I got you good. You did. It where really did, hurt. Where did it hit you? <laughs> I can't remember. Probably in her back because she was running away. It made yeah. contact. It and made it good fucking contact. Hurt. <laughs> I mean, being and able to... End, just the pressure of it. I was going to say, being able to throw a biscuit and it hurts someone and it not just crumble. But it's fury... because I, in that holiday, the muscle memory of skimming stones was right <laughs> within me. So you skim that I, I, I'm always skimming, and that's how I'd skim. <laughs> I'm always skimming. So uh, the digestive biscuit was just the perfect yeah. vehicle to launch. Yeah, and that can't skimming. have been the same holiday I got you on I mean, Maybe it's different. Oh, you we've already said the this story, no? I don't think we have. Oh. Same holiday home well, Should Scotland. we go through all the times you've tried to, to end you. me? <laughs> <laughs> you've been trying to kill me, Meg. Yeah. <laughs> It was, uh, we were in the burn, which is um, rocks, like a rock stream that goes all the way down from the top of a This mountain. is like the, the prime holiday it was home so amazing. in Scotland. Like we were the like best Gollum. It's Rattigan, is it? No, it was, I'll point it out next time we go to Scotland. Rattigan. Oh, it was Rattigan. the best place. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we were shifting, so we like to make dams in this burn. So yeah, we'd muck around for hours. We would hours. be shifting we rocks around. And uh, I was throwing them. I was just throwing rocks for Roy to catch. And I threw one without letting him know. Too close to him. I let him know halfway through the throw. About a baseball size. Oh. Bigger than a tennis ball. Straight to the foot. Oh. To the toe, big toe. Broke one of my toes. Yeah. I think it was the second biggest <laughs> toe. Broke one of them. I yeah. realised I've really harmed you a lot. Should we go for the other one? When we're at the allotment. The scythe, yeah. And then <laughs> a scythe. I don't know. It I mean, we just had a lot of tools. Yeah, it was a scythe. Serrated scythe. I and can't Meg, believe mum and dad let me use it. Meg was uh, try- hacking at long grass. grass with it. Just hacking at it. <laughs> really, like, not the most productive task, but quite satisfying and for you. Yeah, it was satisfying. And then all of a sudden I hit a tree. Rory screamed. It wasn't a tree. It was his hand. The point of it went straight in. <laughs> oh. Into the bone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I'm and sorry. I, I've actually cut my own hand at the other before, and I was embarrassed. Wasn't it the same place? Yeah, same place, and I was embarrassed to tell. The side went straight in. And, but mum was like, I could see the blood through your glove. Because you had those yellow gloves. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Weird yellow, like, leathery gloves. And they were just fucking red. <laughs> <laughs> mum was like, I know you've cut yourself. I could uh, see the blood. I think that's part of just being my younger sibling, is that I've always just tried to kill you. Yeah, you've always... <laughs> no, I don't do it anymore. No. It was like the time when you were really young, and I... We when we shared those bunk beds, and I would show you that I could sit at the top of the bunk bed without holding on, and then I went to nursery, come back, Roy's broken his arm. <laughs> <laughs> tried to <laughs> do it on my own. Tried to do it so. yeah. You could put that picture up. Yeah. Was it? Oh, oh, there it is. And that one I remember very vaguely because I was four years old. Yeah. I remember just being so. It was only a green stick fracture. Yeah. I can't even remember which arm it was. Left. Yeah. Uh, well, you've survived, and I think it's made you stronger for it. So. Yeah, reframe. What doesn't kill That's me? That's probably why you got so big. So I can't that is probably why you well, got I, so big. I usually say it's because I had to grow into my head. Yeah. If I was, imagine if I was still an, uh, a skinny Herbert, I'd be top heavy. Uh, it You'd would just, just be struggles in the wind. Strong gust of wind. <laughs> It'd be a yeah. lanky one. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's uh, that's the stories of me trying to. There's but more. We actually have so a near death experience in Scotland. <gasps> me and you share. This is a big one. So one winter we went to Scotland. Usually we go in May time. Yeah. And we, we go every Christmas single time. year, and this time we went in Christmas. I think we would go both. We go Christmas and May. Yeah. Because we loved it so much, and we were driving home. Day early. A day because early because there of was a storm. A storm a snowstorm. Some of the roads weren't actually. They'd shut some of the roads, or they just told us don't drive any further. So yeah. everyone was parked. On a down slope, on this and it was big icy. mountain. This is on past the cattle. No, 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 no. So it was. It was actually a route we, we usually wouldn't take. Yeah. And then we were waiting for a gritter to and come and there cover were like the road. Twenty cars, right. all parked on the side of this road. We were behind on this ice. convertible with one woman in it, and <laughs> we so were in the back. We were making snowmen on the side of the road, and uh, Roy and I, we had the, we had our comfort. Uh, bit comfies um no it blankets. was our it was our toys so you had blue, oh, bear, blue bear and i had squidgy yeah. and we were like we need them to make the snowman so we jumped in the car jumped they don't in they the don't want to miss out on this <laughs> to get our toys so we were both in the boot we're in the, yeah in the boot and then our from jumping into the car we pushed it pushed it it slid forward and it started sliding it pushed forward. that convertible into the railing on the side oh the, the car hit it was like an armco barrier yeah. and they went up it slightly it did stop after if, all, but... If the convertible hadn't been there, we yeah. would have gone straight to the Because it was a Ford Galaxy. It was a big yeah, old big unit. Big car. Because it was the handbrake on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And mom, I remember squeeze. seeing mum trying to hold onto the car. <laughs> mum was desperately in her boots trying to pull the car back. Oh, wow. um, and the poor woman, oh she my mentioned God, she was it. Sick. She, was like, I was, she was sitting in the front of that convertible. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it started moving towards the edge. <laughs> Imagine! <sighs> Well, because two kids wanted their toys. Our toys couldn't miss out on the fun no. that was occurring outside. That, so yeah, that, that gives that. me just all of the heebie jeebies Do you have a yeah. near-death experience? No. You don't have one? I have times where I hurt myself, but... No, oh, come on. The time um, <laughs> you with the... Sorry. <laughs> when you ran under your apple tree. Yeah. Yeah, I scarred my, my head pretty good. He, um... By the way, Hannah tells it, it's so scary. Julian, tiny Julian, running straight under I'll this... I'll tell you what it was. I had my mate Adam over, not my brother. Uh, <laughs> not my brother. Uh, my mate. Uh, and we were running to get home. Mum was like, dinner's ready. And I was like, I'll race you. And Adam, like an idiot, runs around the tree longer. <laughs> I go under so fast, <laughs> winning, going to get to dinner so quick. <laughs> Lift my head up to celebrate. <laughs> Turns out there's a, a, a trunk of the tree which had been cut uh, and left a nice sharp edge which just found my skull Lacerate real the good. Top of his head. Have you got a skull on top of your head? Oh, He's got yeah. crazy Yeah, scar. when I inevitably go bald, it's going to be gnarly. <laughs> well, um, no, because of all the chicken pox scars as well. Yeah, there's it's that. Gonna we'll be like a golf ball yeah. with just a big line going through it. We'll exfoliate you. Yeah. I'm we'll exfoliate you so um, when the So then I'm in A&E holding my head together and I was like, Mom, I don't think I can go to CCF. She's like, no, we're going to A&E right now. I was like, oh, okay. So we get there, and I'm like holding it together, physically, uh, and the doctor's like, yeah, there's bits of like tree and like bark in his skull. Dirty. And you can just see my Dead skull. To clean your skull, My yeah. dad comes in from work. He's like, what have you done? He looks at it. He's like, oh, I think I need to lie down. So he, he lies white. down in the waiting room. I sit on the chair next to him lying down on the thing at like head height and me and mum are sitting there watching him lie down he's like oh I did I could just see his skull I'm like there with my skull open waiting for the doctor to come yeah oh. it must suck for you that's yeah. so funny yeah you've had quite a lot of like quite gnarly injuries like yeah. one of your foot I was pushing off a swimming pool in Dubai and I cut my big toe open blood went in the swimming pool and then they were so terrified we were going to sue you so. got a free holiday yeah really yeah but he was, that's like you in Jamaica, do you remember? Oh, you bit I do right remember that. You right through your lip. I uh, <gasps> slammed on the side of the pool. Oh, that was my bad. Lip. Oh, oh, that, uh, yeah, 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 that was a bad one. Yeah. It was all right. For children. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, in retrospect, it was quite kind of dramatic. Fun. No, it was. It, it was dramatic because there was a lot of blood, wasn't there it? There was a lot of blood. The kids just hurt themselves. Yeah. They do. They and do. if you shelter them from it, they're going to be. Plus, they make for Weak. such great stories. I think. <laughs> yeah, well, I would. I wouldn't trade anything for those stories. No. And it ties into like hygiene and hypothesis. Trade you for your stories. I'll give you a fiver. <laughs> I'll give you a fiver for these memories. Mm. 
They get 10. <laughs> they said you wouldn't trade it for anything. No, I like, 10 quid. Got 10's on. my number. Yeah. yeah. So you can uh, put it into Rory's it. morals will drop if you give him a 10. He'll do anything. His part was in the hotel package. Anything. Anything. Mostly everything. Okay. But this is what I'd say. It ties into hygiene hypothesis. If you, if you shelter your kid too much, they have a weaker immune system. They're not mm. exposed to bacteria. I think we've all got pretty strong. Julian, you've got a really strong immune system. You rarely get ill. I used to get, I used to come down with like a throat infection like once a month. Do you remember that? That's because like, you were teaching children. I was teaching children. I was, trying, I was like singing a lot at the time as well. I think you just got if you, yeah. overuse. But I found that I don't get ill as much now. No. I think A, because we're eating so good. Mm. Um, like exercising regularly, such a good immune system booster. Um, and doing yoga outside. I think and it's mindfulness. Really yeah. Using the power of your mind, yeah. doing the yeah. body scan. Being, I never used to be bodily present, really. You know, like I didn't know that my posture was bad. Um, but then you're also a musician. Yeah. And I think you can't help when that. you're more aware as well, you're more aware, you find something, you notice it, you nip it in the bud, you mm. start making your honey and lemon. Now, we talked about this. This is like the body will try and will sometimes just make you low-key ill in order to slow you down if you refuse to stop. If you're just constantly going, oh. the body does do it. And like that's the exact, that's what I used to find. And, you know, we talk about having like, oh, man, I'm having such like a, a down cycle at the moment or I'm feeling stagnant. stagnant. And, you know, in The Power of Now, which I, I'm always big up, he talks about how down cycle is so important to growth. You have to be able to balance it. If you just grow, if you just got constant growth mindset, it's like this monster that's out of control. Yeah. You have to have moments of stillness, of calm, of you know stagnation, you know, which is very much a Western thing of being like, oh, I'm not growing. I, my external yeah. factors that are giving me self worth aren't giving me the things that I need. You know, which is definitely tied into imposter syndrome. If you believe mm -hmm. that your self worth is tied to your ability to do something, and then you do it, and you're like, oh, you know, I, I don't think I should be here being able to do this, or someone's going to find out that I don't actually know what I'm doing, etc. Yeah, that's you know, that's a that's because your self worth is tied to something other than your Yourself, you know, and if you if you allow yourself to have those down cycles, particularly in a global pandemic, yeah, and then you can grow out of that. Stop putting so much pressure on yourself. It's mm -hmm. like you know, you that, need that, to... that will make you grateful for the bad times. Mm. Just as per having something to contrast it against, the good times are so much better. Mm. And nothing's innately bad. It's just how we perceive it or how we react to it. And your classic reframe is even in your worst moment, there are people who would trade their lives for it. Exactly. Yeah. Very true. There's no rain. There's no rainbow without rain. And what's the Bob Marley quote you love? About rain? Yeah. It's actually Charlie made me privy to it. <laughs> Some people feel the rain, others just get wet. Bob Marley. And you had that oh, the other day. I did. When you were doing your yoga outside, it was so funny. He was like, where's Jules? And then mum was like, where's Jules? I haven't seen him anywhere. Text in the group chat. Oh, where's he gone? <laughs> where's he gone? Because it was raining outside. I love your mum voice. possibly it's be outside. so good. <laughs> Because it was raining, we're like, he can't possibly be outside. That'd be get, crazy. He, he will get hypothermia. He will die. He will die. <laughs> George is dead. He's gone. He finally on the, the yoga mat, passed out. <laughs> the ultimate smiling. first world problem. <laughs> but you're so calm, Susan. Yeah. Honestly, so I was out there, and it was it was you know when the sun is so hot and and it's quite cloudy as well. So you're getting these moments of just just mm. just blessing you, mm. and then suddenly it's cloudy for a bit longer than usual, and it just starts to rain. And I, f I was really, really uh, focusing on the idea that your mental state is intrinsically open, innately just clear, and you have things that appear. Uh, and I was just like really trying to appreciate that that thing that people search for in spiritual journeys, the whole thing, the cliche is that you always had it within you all along, and it's so true. Mm. And then it started to rain, and I felt really like I could feel it in my chest, and I was just breathing through it. It was really lovely, and then it went away, and the sun came back, and I felt so blessed. It was a really nice moment. It's lovely. That's um, genuinely lovely. I, I really do, really do believe that that your your mind is this open, intrinsic space, and you know we talk about this. Um, you know that which experiences fear isn't fearful. If you experience anxiety, you don't have to identify with it. You know it's just that it's this energy that you've labeled. You've managed to label it, but you don't have to go anywhere beyond that. Being like, I feel like this, or I remember this morning I felt like this. It just comes up, and if you dissipate that energy or you put it into something, you know, whatever, it'll yeah, go away. It goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you come back to that that clean slate. Well, you don't have that. to hold on to it. 
just experienced it and then bye bye now bye now bye Ford <laughs> nice and I'm it's gonna tight. throw out that Seneca quote as well because I absolutely love it it's not how the wrong is done that matters it's how it is taken oh, I love that I've got a Seneca quote to one up you not one up you <laughs> Huzzah. The unaware life isn't worth living. I don't think that. I don't think that. I think that's the one that I made up. I just made my own version of it. Yeah. I made it different. Yeah. I was like, that's Seneca, but I just made it up in my head. But that is the actual quote. Uh, do we have any homework for the week? Homework. Maybe hmm. do some yoga in the rain. Yoga <laughs> <laughs> in the rain. Well, no, just. If it rains, go outside. Uh, homework for go the feel week. the rain. Try out the power of reframing. Oh, yeah. It's so bad Something happening. pops up. Okay, this is the homework. Reframing is your new superpower. There you go. Keep bringing yourself back to Find that. a way Something to... Something bad happens. Yeah. Reframe. The uh, the um, the stoic um, like mindset of being you know something is gonna happen today something I'm gonna face adversity yeah you know rather than like oh, I'm gonna have the best day nothing bad's gonna happen you know who are we to assume that life is gonna just like bend to our will you know we're gonna face adversity and the stoics they they look for the silver linings yeah so that's that's your task yeah. you something bad happens look for a silver lining in it whatever yeah. it may be it might be very silly it might be it could be it's anything, a, and then you've reframed. There's a great uh, reframing thing where it's like, you get knocked over in the park. Is it because you're jogging and someone attacked you? Or maybe you're playing rugby. You should have expected it. Get up. <laughs> <laughs> that is your homework. Brilliant. The power of reframe is now bestowed upon me. Yeah. Level Look up. for the silver lining, reframe it, move on. And if you need help, you know where we all are. Yeah. You can talk to us. Exactly. I think that's it. That's it. We're done. We're done. Get out. Very nice. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> Recorded at the barn. Big up. We're um, in partnership with Viva Life. Check out the links. That latest in, protein powder. In the bios. It's nice. Something else. Oh, gingerbread. Come on. In the bios and use the link, our affiliate link, and use the code HHT10 yeah. at checkout for 10% off. There you go. It would really help us out. Yeah. And it is such high quality stuff. I tell you what. If you're able to give to the Just Giving page, just for the walk, we would all just be so yeah, appreciative. Yeah, please do Meg's that. in the leaves, so far. I'm in the I'm winning, guys. Yeah, Thanks, no. Ned. So all those Thanks, links Ned. are also in the bios. Yeah, 100%. Please, if you can give anything. Yeah. It's anything for a really good cause. 100%. And, I mean, we're walking so far for I, it. I can't stress how... <laughs> Don't make it about us, Meg. I can't stress how little of that money we receive. It's not no, for nothing. us. Nothing. It's not for us. We've asked. We don't even we're, get 50-50. We're, we're playing the game. Whoever gets... Raises the most wins. We're not getting any of the money. <laughs> yeah, none of the money goes. We to just us. want to win. So, so please do I'm that winning. if you can. Thanks, Jules, for coming on again. Uh, always. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, Meg. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Oh, and you if you're guys. liking the little musics in the transitions, shoot us a message. We will work Atlas on them. Atlas Audio. Come Atlas on. Audio. That will be in the bio as well. Yeah, if your podcast you, needs music. Well, what are you up. working on at the moment? So obviously you've done podcast theme for lights cameras blokes yeah the music for this and all the themes and transitions um yeah, and what have you, you got a project you're working yeah on? so i don't uh i don't know if we've <laughs> makes me worried that the camera's gonna run out um, <laughs> I am. yeah we're doing we're doing uh, the theme for an audio book uh, which i'll reveal more when it's out all yeah. right and also thank to, thank you blah, 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 thanks to harriet my sister Beautiful my dear artwork. sister for all the artwork yeah and Thanks, last Steve. word, Jules. Bingo bongo. Bingo bongo. Wow. <laughs> Done. <laughs>